Hello everybody and welcome to mid-March. It's that whimsical, magical time of year where we talk about Santa Claus. Yeah, December and March are a little different in the realms of weather and cultural whimsy. At this point, the love of snow and winter is gone and we are left with nothing but dank, dark, depressing, cold wetness that also changes from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 5, depending upon what hour of the day it is. Or maybe that's just because I live in Ohio. Who knows? Ohio weather jokes aside, the point being is that March seems like an odd time to be talking about a role-playing game called Santa is Dead. At the end of the day, we can cast the Maddox aside, because really, I want to bring up Santa is Dead to illustrate a point about the role-playing game world. But for the time being, what I'm going to do is, well, review Santa is Dead. Santa is Dead is a game brought to us from In Search of Games. A cool little title and... Oh, what is this? 100% of the profits goes to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Oh, great, so now anything negative I say about it's going to send me straight to hell. Okay, either way, I'm digging into this thing. I came across this game one day on DriveThruRPG in the award-winning gaming section. After purchasing the game, I began to peruse the pages. There were only about 30 of them or so, so it was a very quick read. And I very quickly had interesting feelings, or at least I started to generate some questions, if you will. But before that, let's talk about the positive aspects of Santa is Dead. The artwork, for instance, is excellent. It has a dark and macabre overtone to it. I love the fact that it has a very professional, artistic tone, but it still has this style that screams of a high school goth kid's doodles that they make whenever they're bored in AP English class. In some games, it can come across as a negative, but for this one, it has that right amount of charm that makes the game likable and gives it a very solid identity. The game itself is also quite interesting and fun. The game definitely takes inspiration from movies like Krampus, and also Brothers Grimm style of the unsanitized fairy tales. It is dark, morose, it revels in the fact that it is taking something pure and innocent that has become a staple of Western culture and boiled it down, dragged it through the mud, really brought out its more darker, sinister roots. The game has what I'm going to lovingly refer to as a neo-millennial nihilistic sort of feel to it. It's that feel of what I'm going to assume the creators being maybe 20s, early to mid 30s, people who grew up with maybe a goth phase in high school and now are just kind of seeing the world as a very dark and morose place and really dragging all the cute adorableness down with it. I'm not sure who the creator is, Evie Lockhart, and their cavalcade of artists who did the work, but my assumption is going to be that they were in their 20s and 30s as such, the concept of Tim Burton and Tim Burton's vision become a much more prevalent in some of today's creations. Looking through this book gives you a Burton-esque vibe to the artwork that is reminiscent of A Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, Beetlejuice, the movies that all of us goth and emo kids really love whenever in high school, myself definitely being one of them. Hell, even the concept of the game comes across as more of a story if Jack Skellington opened the door to Christmas Town and accidentally merged the two worlds into this unholy abomination instead of trying to take on the role of Santa Claus. The game is very minimalistic. Its system itself is much more geared towards combat and letting role-playing just be role-playing. It takes a lot from Magical Burst in that regard. The book pushes a lot more towards one-shots instead of campaigns, and it really helps, all things considered, that you're able to generate all of this into a really well-told one-shot about this very gothic sort of Christmas-inspired theme. Since we talked about the crunch of the game and the setting as well as some of the positives, I do want to bring up the point that I wish to make right now. I reserve judgment on whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm right now going to try to talk it out on camera pretty much. A, a critique that I have heard lately in RPG circles, and I admit that I've hopped onto this little high horse a time or two, is the idea of what should be turned into an RPG and what shouldn't be turned into an RPG. The internet really is a 
interesting and wonderful concept. I mean, nowadays, we can get any information that we need, for better or worse, as well as people's opinions, for better or worse, thanks to the internet. And you've seen a lot of cultural changes, a lot of different changes in our lifestyles because of this internet that we still ourselves are not fully aware of. RPGs are not in a bubble. They are also meant to be changed by this internet phenomenon. In the 1980s, 1990s, and even into the 2000s, in order to make a successful game, you had to get the game published just like anything else. You had to find a publisher or have enough money to publish yourself and then distribute. The more successful games were able to distribute nationally to bookstores and enthusiast shops. But the small person? The best that they really could do was peddle some small copies at conventions and hope that people picked up more on it. Nowadays, you have sites like DriveThruRPG or other platforms where, as long as you have the ability to add photographs and put words to a Word document and save as a PDF, you can upload your game and sell it to a wide audience who might also be interested in your thing. And I, for one, digging through this, there's several in my gigantic folder that I could bring up to, but really, the game that I thought kind of symbolizes something that just could not work without the internet is Santa is Dead. Santa is Dead is an esoteric game. It is one that is relevant and interesting to a certain number of people, but not really available to a wide audience. Either current or former Burton enthusiasts that like to see a darker representation of the saccharine sweet happiness that is Santa Claus and Christmas. This thing wouldn't go far unless the creator really, and I mean really, pushed it to the point of making their own publishing company just to get the ball rolling and then still having to work to get the games distributed to game shops around the country and not just in their local area. Santa is Dead is not unique. There are a cornucopia of games out there, some of which I've already talked about. There are thousands of games out there now, but the question has been raised, is this all a good thing? In other words, should every single creative idea that someone comes across be turned into an RPG and sold to a mass market? Well, it is no easy answer. Certainly not everything should be turned into a game. Look at the fact that Raho Wa exists as a makeshift entity. It shows proof positive that not everything should be turned into a game. But should a game like Santa is Dead be called out for being, well, too niche? Well, certainly there are some out there that can be called out on it, and even this game can be called out of it for being a very niche story. Ultimately, I feel like the internet and distribution has nothing but good for the gaming community. There are still our own safeguards in place, refusing to purchase certain games on the grounds of our morality and interest. But, thanks to the internet, interesting, strange, and darkly fun games like Santa is Dead have the ability to flourish. With that being said, all things considered, I'm going to give this game a crit. I think it's a fantastic game. And, with that being said, though, I think I'm going to leave Santa dead for the next eight months or so, and then he could rise from the grave with... Santa the Zombie. Till next time. Hello everybody, and thank you for watching Past the Credits. As you all may be aware, I now have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tanner Bivens. And on that Patreon, I have said that I'm going to release exclusive videos to Patreon. And the first one is coming up this Thursday, March 15th. I'm going to be posting on my Patreon the top five best World of Darkness, Chronicle of Darkness games of all time. I'm finally going to be taking every game in the two lines, and I'm going to say these are the five best in my opinion. Now, I am really sorry in advance that I am putting this behind a paywall. I really, really hate the concept of it, but I like getting paid for this, and I just ask for a little bit of support. I typically set the bar for $10 for Patreon exclusive videos. However, for this one, in order to get people at least intrigued and interested, I'm going to release this video for $1. For the first time, I'm going to release this video for $1. And, you know, just please come show your support for the video, for the things that I do. Give the dollar, watch the video, it'll be a good video, I guarantee it. 
And then after that, you can cancel after, you know, you put forth your donation. Only a dollar lost. But, once again, I appreciate all your help, nonetheless. I appreciate you watching. Thank you all so much. And, hopefully I'll see some of you on Thursday. If not, I will see the rest of you on Tuesday.